So here we are in Scrivener, and this is the unformatted manuscript for my non-fiction time travel history book, The Christmas Truce of 1914. So the text has been researched, written, edited and proofread. The images have been sourced, resized and added. The cover has been created and the front and back matter has been written with all the important calls to action included. This book is now ready and waiting to be compiled into the format or formats of our choice. For the purpose of this walkthrough, I am going to choose to compile to an EPUB format, but of course I shall also compile a Kindle version off video. The process is exactly the same as far as we are concerned, it is just that Scrivener shall work its magic in the background to produce each specific format. We begin by going to Scrivener Compile, which can either be accessed by clicking on this icon on the toolbar, or by clicking on File, and then scrolling down to the bottom where it says Compile. I shall now go through the different options that I actually use to produce a non-fiction book of this type, before clicking on the Compile button over here. So we begin by coming down to the bottom here and clicking the drop down marked Compile for, and we click on EPUB eBook. As you can see, we are currently in the Contents option. And here I can decide which chapters and subchapters, or folders and files as Scrivener refers to them, that I would like to include within the eBook. EPUB format. Unsurprisingly, I would like all my chapters and subchapters to appear in the ebook, as well as my back matter here, but that might not be the case with the front matter of the book. If I click on the Add Front Matter checkbox, the front matter pages appear at the top and I can decide which ones will be included. As this ebook is an EPUB that will not be distributed through Smashwords, I'm going to make sure all the pages are included except for the Smashwords version of the title page. A quick little thing to observe is here we can check that those pages we formatted in both the front matter and the back matter are indeed set to compile as is. And we can see that this is the case here. So that is all from this option. If we now look at the separators option, we can choose how our chapters and subchapters will appear within the book. For non fiction books, I prefer to have a section break between each subchapter. So basically, each subchapter starts on a new page. So that is fine as it is. There are no chapters that follow each other, so that one is fine too. I want the subchapter to follow immediately on from the chapter, which in effect is just made up of a heading that contains the subchapters within. So this option is fine as well. And lastly, I want a page break after the final subchapter in a given chapter, so that the next chapter begins on a brand new page. So everything is correct here, and I can move on to the cover option. OK, here I simply find the cover image, and check that is the correct one. And that's all for this option. Then in formatting, I can choose what each of my chapters and subchapters consist of. OK, for my chapters, as I said earlier, there is no actual text within them. So I only need to tick the Title checkbox. You can see the chapters appear highlighted in yellow over there within the binder. The next option of a file within a file does not apply to my structure, and as you can see, this is confirmed through a lack of yellow highlighting. But with my subchapters, I want to make sure that both the title and the text has been checked. 
Obviously, I do not want the metadata, synopsis, or notes to appear. Also, here I can set how much padding I would like at the top of each new chapter. I like to have four lines of white space there. And likewise for the subchapters, where I like to have just two lines of white space. If I click on the section layout, you can see that I prefix each new chapter with the word chapter, and then that code displays the number of any given chapter. And I also like to have the word chapter written in uppercase. But I just keep the default settings for everything else, and likewise for the subchapter. There's no prefix there, for example. OK. Next up is the title adjustments, which gives you extra control over how the title prefixes appear within your front matter. Now I only have pages, in other words subchapters, in my front matter, so no prefixes will appear there anyway. But I do not want any chapter prefix to appear within my back matter, so I need to click on this little cog here and just make sure that the Further Reading and Resources chapter and the And Finally chapter do not have the chapter prefix appearing before the titles. The rest of these I just leave as the defaults. Within the Layout option, I just make sure that this box is ticked. Downsize and resample inline images to visible size. As that helps with the file size of the ebook, which in turn determines how much Amazon will charge for your delivery within their 70% royalty option. So, obviously, the smaller the file size, the better. Now, I personally do not want a table of contents for this book. However, here is where you would set up the table of contents of your book if you did want to include one. Everything else I leave as the default. OK, transformations I do not touch. HTML settings I just make sure that the Scrivener links are converted to HTML links. Then replacements, statistics, and tables I leave well alone. And the same with footnotes and comments. However, I do fill in the metadata options. So as you can see, I have filled in the title, the author. I have included Dr. Tara Tempus as a contributor. I have included history as the subject and a very short description of the book. The publisher is Alternate Reality. And I'm just going to check that the language code is set to EN for English. And that is it. I am ready to click on the compile button now and save the EPUB file to a folder on my computer. So that's the end of this video walking you through Scrivener's compile. Thank you very much for listening. Bye bye.